Hey dudes, it's Trent here with another Sketchbook Pro tip. Uh, this question came in uh, from Bjorn Hjorth. I hope I'm saying that right, on Twitter. And uh, what Bjorn wants to know is, uh, how do you handle not having the feature to mask layers in Sketchbook or group layers? And I'm gonna address this because I didn't think it had those features either, but I did a little digging and I figured out exactly how to do it. So I'm gonna show you uh, why, how to do that in Sketchbook Pro. Uh, up here at the top, you'll notice you got your toolbar up here. There's a number of different uh, paint buckets, text tools, and transforms. But we're gonna just deal with this one next to the, the zoom button. And so uh, here you can create selections for, in squares, ellipses, or the handy little draw whatever the heck you want kind of a thing. Uh, now the thing that I've done before I go into this is I've set up my layers to have my line art from an old drawing that I had done on a multiply layer. You'll notice I went up here, went down to multiply, and underneath that is my painting layer. That's what I'm going to be drawing on. Now the multiply just makes it so that the white passes right through and will pick up whatever color is underneath. To show you an example, without anything selected, I can go in and just paint with whatever color I've got selected and it goes right underneath. But for now, Let's delete those. Let's undo that and go up here to the selection tool and uh, let's create a selection for the piece that we actually want to color in. We're gonna create, this is what's called a mask. And uh, we have that selected. Now, from here, we just go over, click on our airbrush, pick a color that we wanna use and go in and fill it in. Now, what we could do if we we're, were creating a number of different items, uh, we could say, okay, if that handle is going to be the same color of metal as this piece here, we select this. And this is going to be a little bit sloppy just because I'm not about making it perfect right now. I just want to show you guys this technique. So we make that a selection. So now all of that is on this layer. We could turn it on, turn it off. We could actually move that around if we wanted to. There is a button here. I don't want to confuse you too much, but there is a way to move that around. Um, but let's go back. We've got that color is on that layer. Now let's create a new layer. And we're gonna make another selection. And this one is going to be the wood part. And if we hold down shift, we can add to that selected selection by drawing in another spot. And that adds it to it. If you wanted to erase from it, you could actually hold down the option key and erase out a section. But we're not gonna do that. So I hit Command Z and I undo that. So now I go back to my airbrush and let's say that's gonna be like a wood color. So we just airbrush in what we have there. Now here's where Sketchbook Pro gets super awesome. Um, these are masks now. So if I hit deselect Command D, that deselects those. Now, if I wanted to just paint Let's say I wanted to just change the color of that first item. I go to that, that layer and there's a key, a lock down here. And if I lock that, now I'll only paint, it's selected basically only the objects that are on that layer. So I don't have to redraw my mask at all. I can just go in and fill that in in whatever color I want. So let's say that that's a little bit, let's go back to this one and let's lock la that layer. This is our wood layer. And let's add a little bit of brown and you can see I can airbrush in on it. And that's a really, really, really cool feature, right? But here's where it gets even cooler. Let's say that I just wanted all of these to be in one group. Now I can actually select both of these layers and hit Command G. That creates a folder that is now a group. And I can go over here and I can drag whichever layers I want to be part of that group into that folder, oops, you gotta make sure it's highlighted on that folder. And now the indicator here that these are gray means that they are in that folder. I can click on the folder itself to collapse it and therefore I have my group. You could rename that, whatever you want, but you could have a number of different groups available to you. So the, the benefit of grouping all of your uh, layers for a part together is that you can you can actually move around the whole group of it. Um, both of those layers will now act as if they are one. Uh, there are some things that you can't do with it. For instance, like you couldn't uh, 
paint on both of these at once, but at any time, let's say that I, I wanted to just move all those colors over, I could move them over here. And uh, let's say I just wanted to change again by locking that layer, I can go in and paint whatever color I want into that, that layer. But we're not gonna do that because that looks bad. Now, another way that you can add selections is to try some of these other different selection tools. This one is a little bit more of an angled thing that uh, I don't personally use this one ever. Um, it's just because I never really need any kind of an angled thing like that. Um, I tend to go with more organic shapes. Uh, this one is a uh, selection tool, but you'll notice if I, hit, if I hit select on this layer, let's say that I'm actually working on the layer where I had uh, this wooden part of the staff. If I were to go to the magic wand selection tool, this will select everything on that layer. Now, if I were to use that on this layer, first of all, I'd have to make sure that it's not locked. And then if I hit select, it'll select everything outside of the object. But if I select everything inside, it will select that. So it basically selects by groups. Uh, the advantage to that is, uh, for instance, I'm gonna show you something kind of like, I always like to show you guys the Super Saiyan level, the more advanced stuff. Check this out. So if I go to my line art layer and I make a selection of an object, let's say we wanna colorize the inside of this metal piece here. I go in everywhere where the lines are closed and I make that selection. And then I go back down to my group, create a new layer, and I hit that with the airbrush. That's gonna paint in that whole area. So this is a super quick way for you to paint in your line art. Let's just go ahead and uh, for the heck of it, you know, we'll make a bunch of selections and paint in. But this gets a little bit tricky because if you have a very highly detailed piece, you're gonna end up with a lot of little selections, tiny little selections. You might have to actually go in with the more manual thing uh, and, and actually hold down shift and collect all those. Now remember, all this is gonna go behind my line art anyway. Um, and then go back into our paint layer, select that airbrush, bam, and paint that in. Now keep in mind, this is all within my group folder that I had created. So that allows me to switch it on or switch it off as I need it. So this isn't a fancy drawing and I don't wanna go into drawing uh, for this, this image. Uh, this was really just a quick tip, kind of a tutorial because some of my longer videos get very uh, meaty and uh, there's a lot of detail and a lot of information in there. And uh, I just wanted to kind of call out some quick tips that'll help you get started and get cruising on your own drawings with Sketchbook Pro. I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, if you'd like to see more of my hardcore videos, I do have box sets of tutorials on Gumroad. You can uh, check the link in the uh, text section below. It's kind of how I keep this whole YouTube operation going. Uh, so uh, any kind of support is much appreciated and I hope it really helps you get off the ground with, with doing digital art. All right, dudes, that's it for me on this one. I'll catch you all in the next video. Ciao.